Hello Pisces. Not only Sun Pisces, but also Moon rising. Uh, generally look at your natal chart and see uh, what signs are personal, personal planets in. Personal planets are Sun, Moon, uh, Mars, Venus and Mercury. And these areas, th those signs are signs that are important to you and that you may watch. Uh, pieces on, of information will be available in many, many, many readings for you. Okay, as you can see, the cards are already on the table because I was doing this reading in my native language first. I would say this year is very soothing for you, although it's also uh, quite dynamic and full of thought and reason. <laughs> first, you appear as the Empress, which means you're going to be very creative, abundant, probably very healthy. Some of you girls may got pregnant, you may have children or a child. There may be a new chapter in your life where your femininity uh, blossoms and shines. For men, this may indicate that you will meet someone, a woman, uh, someone that will uh, enter, that will open a new chapter in your life. Generally, I would say this is a very safe and secure energy together with the Judgment card that says that there may also be some uh, endings um, as far as uh, the, the question of femininity is concerned. Perhaps it's something about your mother or other motherly figure in your life that you sum up and end and perhaps start a new chapter with a clearer mind and clearer heart. Overall, I would say this is a very refreshing energy. Perhaps not the easiest one because the judgment is, is usually connected with the need to sum up, to end things, to forgive uh, things. But when you go through it, after you, you are through it, you are fresh and new as a newborn because you are newborn into a new life. So that's you in 2020. Now, the main theme of the year is the journey together with Kurandera of Earth, which is King of Pentacles. So again, um, very material quality to it. Uh, also safe and secure. Uh, king of Earth, King of Pentacles is someone who has built his kingdom and now he's guiding it and guarding it. He is the one who decides what to do with all the wealth and abundance uh, around him. He is the one who uh, can share it with others or refuse to do it. Generally, there is healing power in this card, in this deck, the healing of earth. And the journey speaks about the urge to go somewhere, to discover something new. I'm going to read it to you. It's number 29. And it says, It is an invitation to step outside the boundaries of your life as you know it. So it may be that in the position of King of Pentacles, King of Earth, you have as much as you can get, and you are master of this element and now you need to step out into some new territory. And I think this is the territory of swords, the territory of the mind in this year. The journey is not a holiday. It is a call to be hermit-like and go on a pilgrimage into the unknown. There are no maps to the territory you will be exploring, no marked paths or road signs. The time to embark on the great journey is here. Do not linger in the port when distant shores are calling. Fearlessly draw your own navigational charts as you discover the route. When the time is right, as it is now, you will be led through, even when you are not sure of where you are going. It is the departure that is most important. If you miss the boat, a great opportunity will be lost 
and another ship may not arrive for a very long time. It may also act as a medicine. If it is a medicine for you, then the journey is calling you, but the time is premature. Collecting postcards or fantasies of where you want to go may take over your focus and make you miss your destiny. Other things must be completed first, or you may still be attached to knowing the destination. Remember that the point of the journey is not the destination. It is who you will become as you are transformed along the way. Do not confuse the inner and the outer journey. Okay? So go on, embark on this ship. It's going to lead you into new territories. Okay? The year, in a short view, a sketch of some kind, we have two eights, eight of air and eight of major arcanas, which is strength, and that's garlic in this deck, and I love it. The gentle strength, <laughs> the gentle power of garlic, sweetened by honey. These are two medicines, very powerful, working together, healing uh, the body and healing the mind. So I, I think you maybe or might have been in a place where you were a little bit stuck, because eights are about power, about double boundaries. You might have uh, found yourself in a place in your mind where you felt stuck, where there was this entrance or exit, but the bushes are so high that you cannot pass through it. So you may not see the situation as it is. I think this obstacle will be re re revealed and relieved from your life because uh, the other two cards are ace of fire so fiery energy and the sun which is even more fiery energy those are very active uh, cards uh, speaking about elan vital the will to live the, the will to thrive the will to shine and to burn and to act so if you were stuck in your mind, you will find strength in yourself to enter a new chapter and to really make this uh, fire a great fire. And I think this is, uh, this is the air you really cannot uh, leave unanswered. This is so strong, the energy of fire here. But still, I feel it as a steady and gentle fire. Uh, because I saw the rest of the reading and it's very, very calm, I would say. The greatest lesson this year, something you will definitely experience, is Two of Swords. Usually I read this card as inability to make a decision, but not this time. It's, it feels more, more like subtle, slow reasoning and discernment. That's what I feel with this card. You will have this time to weigh things and make decisions without haste. I pulled the additional card and I see Page of Pentacles, which is a very meticulous card. Uh, he's looking at everything he finds on the ground and he's weighing it. He's looking at it closely. He's searching for the value in everything he touches, in everything he studies. And I think that's this meticulous, slow way of deciding that uh, you will uh, experience this year. And I think this may be a new experience to you. Then we have the challenge. There is Eight of Pentacles here, and it definitely speaks about everyday life and uh, chores of all kind and all the things we do uh, over and over again. Perhaps the challenge is to perfect something in your life, to make it better, uh, to, to, to create a final form of something. But most, uh, mm, the, 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 str the strongest meaning that I have is about everyday life because the, another card that I pulled is Six of Cups, which is also about small pleasures in life, um, treating everyday like a gift 
that it truly is and uh, being more like a child in cherishing uh, the life as it is in its tiny droplets of everyday uh, of everyday activities everyday decisions it, you may find it boring this time you may find find it uh, overwhelming this year that's over and over the same things again right I also I also know the feeling because um, I am a mother of two and a wife and for example I cook every day I cook at dinner sorry that's my dog and sometimes I think oh no not again <laughs> again I have to make soup I have to uh, have these one hour or two hours to prepare a meal for everyone so I know the pain but on the other hand and that's the advice that I pulled for you really appreciate that this is stability that we have and this stability is a privilege that many people on earth can only dream about that's the truth we live uh, in a very complicated and uneven unjust world and here where i live in europe we really have this uh, privilege of quite wealthy life so see it see that you have a roof over your head see that you have food you can feed your children without problems this is a great blessing if you really see it with fresh eyes every day so thank make thanks for this stability feel gratitude for this then this everyday chores uh, will probably be uh, more satisfactory I think what is your power this year you have the lovers and it's about making decisions and choosing with your heart because it, it's uh, it's called the lovers so there's love here um, present that that's love that guides you towards the right decision towards the uh, right solution I think you have uh, great clarity about what are the options because you have this gift of discernment this year and you tend to decide uh, with acceptance and with the feeling of responsibility for what you do that may also bring satisfaction to you I pulled the additional card and here it is Queen of Cups the one that is tender and loving unconditionally I love this card the way she looks at her chalice at her cup it's almost like it's her baby so she treats it with gentleness and love and that's how you should treat your heart if you treat your heart heart this way then it will guide you towards right decisions and that's the power you have this year and then I asked what to do and this notion of thought and thinking and deciding and cerebral work appears here yes you should think a lot you should think deeply this is the accumulation of a swords energy so the peak performance of your cerebral mind is present here that's what you should do as I said you are called into something new the journey here you are also taken by this fire this ace of fire and the sun from a place that was um, hmm, like a mind trap something too narrow for you you are taken to another place so it may be a great time to face something that wouldn't be possible to do in a more uh, easy time when everything flows normally especially that you may be bored with everyday life so now it's time to really look for something spectacular 
for example, if you were always thinking about uh, writing a book, now it's time to do that. Uh, the second card I have is the chariot. So your mind helps you to overcome obstacles and to really move forward this year. Use your mind, even if it's dangerous. Of course, this card has a very famous shadow side, the mind unleashed, uh, that uh, really makes us vulnerable and uh, enables uh, us to uh, live life truly when it's too harsh when it's too loud when we let it take control take over control over us then it's uh, the shadow side but it can can also be very brilliant the nine of swords it's taking uh, thought and uh, in, how do you say it not impression uh inspiration taking inspiration from many different places perhaps um, unknown places perhaps places you wouldn't suspect to contain any information and inspiration taking that and making this powerful concoction in your mind that really cuts through something like knife through butter that's what you should do what shouldn't you do we have uh, double Two. And we also had double uh, swords uh, in this position. And what I was thinking about is you should take uh, your discernment into consideration in the first place. And then, only then, uh, ask others or let others decide. I think this is a very special time in your life when you may embark on something that is quite difficult and it may be even better for those that you love and for those that are that are dear to you and for those that go through life with you to really let you go on this journey alone that's the feeling i have because it may be very challenging it may be a dark journey and perhaps it's your unconditional love who says I must leave you now for a time. Let me do my work. Let me face it. Let me face it. I'm going to face it. I'm going to be triumphant in the end. But I need to face it alone. So uh, really um, count on yourself. Count on your discernment. And probably don't involve others into it. Because it is your journey. It is your way. It is your life lesson. Okay. As for seasons of the year, we have in winter the Hierophant and Ten of Wands. So something uh, is ending, something probably connected with hierarchy, um, perhaps faith, perhaps all things connected with uh, institutions are ending in your life something is uh, finalized here it may be a tough process especially the ending of it you may feel uh, overwhelmed by something perhaps the institution is not very friendly but you have to you still have to work with it you still have to finish something uh, with this institution there may, may also be a crisis uh, of faith for some of you uh, and perhaps a chapter in your life where you were like <laughs> like something or someone is ending in your life and a new chapter uh, begins when you become someone else. Perhaps you find a different kind of faith within you. Perhaps you dispose of um, merchants of faith in your life. Perhaps you gain... Uh, direct connection with the higher self with god with universe this may be a uh, relief for you in spring we have eight of wands and ten of swords so another ending i think uh, I, I think that things uh, really take pace events take uh, pace 
things are happening quickly. You may travel a lot. You may communicate a lot. You may change uh, direction of your movement. Uh, perhaps you were waiting for something to embark. Now it's great time to do that. There's also a relief here with Ten of Swords. It doesn't necessarily mean something terrible will happen. Absolutely not. There might have been something hanging over you that ends now. Some things finally hit the ground. Some things finally find uh, their place. And there is uh, an ending of a cycle that really creates space in your life. That's how I feel those two cards together. Then we have Summer and you have King of Pentacles. So the card that you already had and Seven of Pentacles. So I think you take time to, to uh, tender your material possessions, to take care of all living things around you, uh, taking care of your uh, kingdom. Uh, it may be about home, about a house, about a garden. It may also uh, be about your work and career and resources and your body. Again, you may realize that in the area of material things, you have reached the highest level of competence as a king of pentacles. And that's when you decide to embark on a ship. That's when you decide to move into a new territory because this territory is being taken care upon. And you also see what works, what doesn't work. Uh, perhaps you've been waiting very, very long to make this step outside of this environment. And finally, uh, in uh, autumn, another king. So from King of Pentacles, you enter the energy of King of Swords. So the one who is very decisive, the one who is a thinker, analyst, uh, great judge, intellectual. And it seems that there is also this uh, aura of a sage around this person. And now I, uh, I was reminded that I didn't show you these cards. This is your guide this year. And this is sage. So I think great, wisdoms, great wisdom comes your way. Uh, this year, I'm going to read it to you. It says about devotion and commitment. Sage. What it says. Be, be willing to go the whole road and back again. This will allow you to be the best you can possibly be. So there is this notion of growing into who you can become. Uh, it says, devotion is a powerful energy. Right now, angels and ancestors want to acknowledge how committed you are to your growth. Your co continued dedication to this aspect of your life has been recognized and your understanding that you are not only a body but also a soul is all you need to continue growing and expanding. The energy of oneness is offering itself to you now and it's important you take some time to integrate it all so that you can be supported and guided by it. So the energy of oneness is present here. This is what the divine wants for you. Make a note of experiences or teachers making themselves known to you at this time because you are going to share those teachings one day too. Perhaps that, that day is coming even this year when you are this king of swords a teacher, someone who advises, definitely here. And again, Eight of Swords that was present here. This is feeling trapped in a situation without the ability to move. I think the King of Swords is the one who sees that it's only an illusion, who sees clearly that there are more possibilities in life and that this situation only appears to be uh, uh, like uh, like you're stuck. The, uh, the, the, the reality is that your mind can help you to be 
free from this situation and I think you're going to be free from some mind obstacles. Okay, and now for some more particular areas of life. As for work, career, money. Endings and beginnings, beginnings and endings, new ideas, new brilliant um, ideas coming to you, perhaps a new endeavor. Uh, this is also a very triumphant card, the card of winning, card of uh, cutting through the bullshit. Uh, you seem very active in this. Queen of Wands is the one who is an entrepreneur. She is um, vibrant and magnetic and uh, people uh, listen to her and love her. She can also enjoy life and she does a lot. I think you are going to gather many experiences this year. Uh, but I don't see, uh, I don't see overwhelming uh, energy here. I think you're going to cope with it in a brilliant way, no matter how um, heavy it is, you're going to find your way to the castle and you're going to find a way to finish what you've started. Uh, because, yeah, she's brave, courageous and strong. She's going to make it. In love, I see beautiful cards in love because there is some kind of, there is this change of aura here. From Four of Pentacles, which is very, the card of a miser, they say. You take everything uh, for yourself. You don't want to share anything. You uh, push away others, even if they are in need. So you start with this cold heart, I think. But then something changes. The way you look at things really changes. This is the Law of Attraction card. And you look into the future and you see something that really makes you want to be there already. And you start to uh, ask those things to come into your life. And I think you really need a new beginning. You have this feeling that you will find something very precious and this time you want to share it. And that's beautiful. There is this new prospect in your emotional life. Something very precious that you discover and you, you won't keep it to yourself this time. You are going to share it with someone. So beautiful opening energy here. And we also have beautiful opening energy in uh, the matter of spirituality. We have strength that also appeared here. We have one of water which is called open channel in this deck. And full of wind called mastery in this deck and this is the peace of mind always for of when this, this precious moment when we know of all the errands around us but our mind is peaceful and our mind understands everything so there's mastery of mind here there's also all encompassing energy of strength this is gentle strength i love this card because there is this, again, unconditional love present here. I think you feel oneness very much. As uh, I was saying with the journey card, that oneness is offered to you. You are close to it. You feel it in your heart. Your heart is an open channel and it's all encompassing. So it seems, you know, these cards numerolo numerologically, uh, the, this is four, this is four, this is eight double four so double stability double boundaries double power four is about power and stability and boundaries so it seems that your heart is encompassed by it and it feels safe in it but somehow for me it really takes the first place and if your if your heart is open if there is no fear in it, if you feel oneness with the universe, then this mastery and strength is really the result of the open heart in your spiritual life. There is great calmness in this reading. I, when, I, when I was doing it in my native language, I, f I felt this immense peace in me, especially when I saw these three cards. So I think that through 
thick and thin through many different experiences, through perhaps excessive thinking, a uh, very uh, intensive period of uh, life is ahead of you, especially with those fiery cards here. But I think those experiences are so precious to you and you really become someone much wiser, like a sage, and you go all the way and back from it, from the journey, and you really come back as someone else, someone much more deeper, much more in connection with uh, divine, with the divine, with the universe, whatever you call it. There's this great feeling of serenity and peace in this reading. And I love it, Pisces. I hope it resonates. I hope you're going to have beautiful year 2020. Remember, that's the beginning of a new decade. So it's also a great time to put some uh, base for the next 10 years. Work on it with your open uh, heart that is filled with unconditional love. And everything is going to be just great. Thank you very much for your time and attention. Be safe, be healthy, be happy. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.